these and many other products and we just want an opportunity to let Max and Dan show up some of the view board uh, features from ViewSonic and they're fantastic. So you'll, you'll enjoy this. And before they start, we just want to thank Jay for lunch. Um, you're welcome. Thank you for spending time here. I know it's so busy in your lives. Thank you. Awesome. Yep. Thank you guys. Thanks for having us here. Uh, we're just glad to be able to present our solution. Just a quick show of hands. Who here is in the IT department? Okay. Um, who here is in administration? And then who's educators? We got a good mix. Am I missing any other group? It depends on if the assistant principal has to sub. Oh, there you go. Awesome. We're passing out candy. All right, and then I do have one more question for everybody too. Who, who here has heard of the Sonic brand? The Sonic has a brand. I see a lot of IT folks, right? So, so we used to make. Uh, ViewSonic has been a display company for over 34 years. A lot of people recognize the little bird logo, the little Finch logo, and we started out as a desktop monitor company. So we still have a really wide lineup of desktop monitors, uh, everything geared towards like eSports or yearbooks, graphic design, to kind of your basic standard like desktop monitor. Uh, things have grown significantly. Obviously, projectors became the next big kind of boom. And now view boards or the interactive flat panels have become a significant part of our product lineup. Uh, but I do just like to kind of mention that, that we've been around for a very long time. We have a very stable product portfolio. It's a very important decision for schools when they're spending money and making investments in technology that you're going with a solution and a company that's been around for a while. And I'll let Dan kind of share his story, but I've been with ViewSonic for five years. I cover five states, um, and I'm based physically in Arizona, but I'm your direct representative. Dan, fortunately, is based here in Colorado, so we do have some local support and presence. Um, but again, I am here, and I, I left my card with everybody, so if you do have follow-up questions, I know myself and Dan are always open to have anybody email us or give us a call if you have questions that come up. Yeah, and then I'll probably jump back in at the end to show more of like the management piece that's probably gonna pertain to some of the IT folks on how you would actually centrally manage the devices. It's all cloud-based. There's an app embedded on the panel. Um, but I know you guys have already seen the Samsung panel and then the Epson projectors. Um, so I'm gonna let Dan kind of take it over from here and share some of the teacher perspective. <coughs> Yeah, thanks, Max. Yeah. Um, my name is Dan. I actually live in South Denver. Uh, I was a, I started off as an elementary school teacher in Aurora Public Schools, uh, taught middle school there as well. I uh, was a math coach for a long time, so I'm a huge math nerd, so I apologize for all my math references. Um, just never quite latched on to literacy, even though my daughter is a huge reader. Um, went to Denver Public Schools as a tech integration specialist, so um, I was helping schools like roll out Chromebooks for the first time in Google Classroom. And, uh, it was in Montbello, and so they didn't have math coaches. So they were like, hey, while you're doing that tech stuff, can you get a math coach as well? And I was like, yeah, sure. And then, of course, I ended up covering math classrooms, which was a lot of fun. Um, and so I, I, I just am fascinated with how technology works in the classroom. Um, and for so long, we saw them as different, but really, they're all connected. Um, uh, so if I'm coaching on pedagogy, uh, actually, the technology is a piece of that now. It used to be seen as separate. Um, and so from there, I was doing a lot of work with Google for Education, um, uh, helping them train like on their products and stuff like that. Uh, decided that I wanted to be an administrator because I felt like as a coach, I couldn't really set the policy. Like I was always battling my administration. And so I was like, all right, principal, here I come. Uh, I was a principal for one year and it was fun. <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> Um, and after my first year, uh, I was my our principal had gone on maternity leave for the whole year, so I was the acting principal. So I was kind of like, you know, you get to try it, but, but give it back. Um, so my buddy, uh, who worked at ViewSonic at the time, we were both Google trainers, and he was he had just started at ViewSonic, and he's like, hey, you want to come 
be a trainer at ViewSonic. And I was like, no, that sounds terrible. Uh, this, you're a TV company. Like, like, you make TVs. He's like, no, that's the point. Like, TV, like, this is so much more than projecting content, right? It's not just a chalkboard either. And so, uh, fortunately, my job is I go and support schools. And I train coaches, IT, teachers, and we talk about how this integrates uh, with what they're doing um, in a way that actually gets used and they don't put their chart paper on it because that's what usually happens in <laughs> proper training. Um, and since I'm local, uh, Max invited me along. I don't do this all the time, but I'm happy to be able to kind of show off uh, what this is all about. Uh, and we have limited time, so I apologize. I'm basically going to condense a two-day training into uh, 30 minutes. So here we go. Uh, this is what we call a view board. Okay, it's a TV, but it's touch. It's interactive. You get that. Uh, many of these devices are very similar in how they respond. Uh, what you're looking at here is called the ViewBoard OS. So all of our boards come with a uh, mini built-in computer. It's a light computer. It's not meant to be as powerful as what we would call the teacher computer, right? The Mac that is sitting in front of you. But it can do a couple things. So uh, you'll notice there's a Chromium browser here. Uh, this is nice because I can quickly walk up and just turn on a website, right? Maybe I want to go to YouTube and show something. Or uh, FET is probably one of my uh, favorite websites. And you're all familiar with uh, touch because we use phones and things like that. And so every time you know I'm, I'm touching on it, it just responds. It's like a click is what I like to call it. Um, but the cool thing is, is that when you get into interactive boards like this, they support multi-touch. And that's just a really nerdy term uh, for we can have multiple students up at the board at once, right? So they can come up here and interact with websites like FET and move the tiles independent of one another. That's nothing special or unique to ViewSonic. It's just something that you get when you have an interactive board. Now, one of the other things that exists on the view board is what we call our whiteboard software. And I apologize for my IT people. I'll get more into the nuts and bolts of this, but I'm, I want you to think of this from like a workflow. Like, if I'm a teacher and I walk into my room, what am I going to do? And so part of it is I might throw up a website really quickly, um, although you'll notice that Chromium is kind of a light website so um, or a light browser. So like my bookmarks don't pop up. Uh, it's not syncing to my Chrome, right? It's not a full Chrome browser. Um, and so most of the time I'm going to connect my laptop when I want to do those kinds of things. And I'll show you how to cast and do all that stuff later. Uh, but one of the things that uh, teachers really love is our whiteboard software. And uh, the whiteboard software is something that's complimentary. You can actually go download it for your uh, computers or use our web version right now if you wanted to. Uh, so even if you don't buy VSonic and you like the software, you can just take it and use it. Don't tell them that. Max isn't listening. <laughs> um, and the idea is, is that this is just a uh, chalkboard, right? So I can touch and it responds. Um, and it's multi-touch, right? So you can have multiple students up at the board writing and annotating at the same time. Um, but what's important is that uh, this integrates with content that I already have. So as an example, uh, when you have a big board like this, um, this doesn't leave the room. Maybe if it was on a cart, but it sounds like that's not going to happen. So <laughs> this board doesn't come with you, so I can't take this with me. Well, if I want to access something like my Google Drive, I don't want to leave it up here. Like I don't want it on the board. So our whiteboard software has the ability to sign in directly to our uh, Google, or if you use Office 365, that works as well. Uh, using a simple app called the My View Board Companion app. And what this does is it keeps me signed in on my phone because I can take this with me. And then when I want to sign into the whiteboard software, I just scan that QR code. And the way that I can tell I'm signed in is I should see my name in the top left corner. This is what's called my board portal. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but what this allows me to do is just quickly pull up things that I might want to teach with and or have kids engage with. So as an example, I'm going to go down to this tool here. This is called the Magic Box. <coughs> Uh, we had a lengthy discussion with our education team yesterday about uh, should the magic box remain a cardboard box because it looks sad and it's not very special. Like the magic box needs like a wand with like stuff. I think it's great, but um, anyway, you'll notice that Google Drive is part of the magic box. Now that wasn't there before. It only appears because I'm signed in. And what this is going to allow me to do is then go into my drive um, and just search for different things I want to import. So maybe I have a Google Slides presentation. I uh, maybe a Google Doc or uh, even something a little uh, more simple like a PDF. Uh, we used Engage New York in Denver and so a lot of our uh, content was in PDF. So as an example, um, if I want uh, an area and activities worksheet, this is just PDF format. This is actually Google Slides here. Give it a double tap. What it's going to do is say it's not supported, so that is not the right file. So <laughs> I'm going to take one second. 
I was uh, updating all my files the other day because um, we had a new salesperson who came on and they said, hey, can you share some of your examples? And I said, sure. And then she removed them all from Drive because she's new to Drive. Well, <laughs> I was able to get them back. All right, I'm switching content on you. We're just gonna do action verbs instead. So here's an action verb worksheet. It's got four pages on it. Pages three and four are the answer keys. I don't want those. So I'm just gonna select pages one and two and then we'll import it here. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna bring in page one. Page two is actually on the next side. Um, and PDFs and other things come in portrait mode, right? Because they're made for being printed out, but we're doing it digital on a nice white screen. So we can use this tool here called the hand tool. It's a two finger spread that lets us zoom in. Then I can grab here and I can circle listens and hits and grunts. And if I go back to my finger and scroll, it all sticks, right? It all stays, or I can zoom back out, okay? No. Ooh, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> They haven't even started yet. <laughs> um, so we call that infinite canvas. And in fact, uh, what we see a lot of times is that. You uh, can't call it that. Oh, okay. Infinite canvas? We have infinite canvas, Arias canvas. Oh, no, no, no. Because now that you're going like, to put those put things together. In, you're more talking about infinite chaos. That's <laughs> <laughs> we call it, Denver. Um, you call this whatever you want to. In training. <laughs> I call it the hand. Because what do you do on your phone when you want to zoom on a picture? Yeah. You use the hand. Uh, kids actually use this a ton. I walked into a classroom and the kids were uh, here. Uh, by the way, the board does come with styluses. I use my finger because uh, it's just what I'm used to. Uh, these are not magical styluses, by the way. These can be uh, replaced uh, at uh, almost no cost or you can buy some on Amazon if you want every kid to have their own. Or, uh, if you're a little teacher and you have the stick with the finger on it, you can use those as well. Uh, if you have a student with disabilities, they can actually use a tennis ball um, if they can't grab a stylus. So uh, we did that intentionally. Uh, but we have kids up here, and they'll be writing, and uh, they run out of room. And so what they do is they go to the hand, use one finger, and just scroll down, and they can keep working. And you can go left, right, up, down. But when they're finished, they can use the hand to go back and get all their work kind of back into one spot. So uh, the other thing is, uh, I was at a school, I think this was in Minnesota, and I told the kids, I said, hey, you all know, because these kids were using it, and I said, you know when you write uh, that you can write independent? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, we know that. And I said, oh, well you know the pointy side um, is a different color. You can change it into a different color if you wanted to. And they said, oh yeah, yeah, we know that. And I said, okay. Well, did you know that you don't actually have to select the eraser tool, which uh, down here, if you want to erase, if you just make a flat palm or a fist, it automatically turns into an eraser. So you don't have to switch tools because that's part of the multi-touch. And they said, no, we didn't know that. They're really excited about that tool. <laughs> so on the surface, yeah. On multi-touch, can you have two different kids writing with their fingers in two different colors? Uh, you can only on a Windows device simply because the Android side is just a little too, it's your phone, right? Android is not a very powerful operating system to be able to recognize all that. But you could grab the pen and use the fine point in a different color and then use your finger for the other color. So they just can't do it at the same time. Um, we haven't had too many issues with it, but that's a good question. And uh, on Mac, just so we're clear, so I'll talk a little bit about Mac. Mac is not a touch operating system. They've been pretty clear about that. Uh, so the max points you'll get is two on a Mac. Uh, Windows, you'll get 20 on Android, you'll get 20 as well. Not that you'll ever fit 20 kids around the board anyway, but just so you know. Um, so on the surface, the whiteboard is a, a very uh, simple tool to immediately integrate with teacher content. And that's important because if you're talking about purchasing something new, and as many of you know, if you walk into uh, <coughs> excuse me, your schools and you say, hey, uh, we're gonna have to learn something totally new, they're gonna go, no, I'm out. Just roll it out of my room, or sorry, take it off the wall, I mean, and get it out of here. <laughs> um, and so what we wanna do, and the, and the purpose of Whiteboard is to uh, make it simple and work with the content that you already have. And even though the whiteboard software is here at the board, right, I can still do all this and kind of prep my activities and import my content ahead of time um, if I'm on my computer and I don't want to be at school, right, which is important um, as an educator. 
Now, that's digital content. Another piece of the whiteboard software is being able to bring in non-digital content. And there's a couple ways we can do it. So I have one of these uh, very modern contraptions right here uh, called a document camera. We're all familiar with these. Um, and a lot of times, uh, teachers like to you know, sit at their desk and then just project and use this as a projector. Well, I hate that. That's annoying. <laughs> so go to the box. Remember, it's where the magic happens. And you'll see the red lamp. Uh, any document camera that's connected can be displayed live in the whiteboard software. And so the teacher can still have their nice uh, document camera open over here and they can be uh, writing underneath it, but you still have your whiteboard ability or the ability to add, have students adding information and content here. Or what I prefer is you use the camera lens, just snap a picture of it, put it on the canvas, because remember once it's in the canvas, it sticks and I can use uh, the hand tool. Right, to zoom in and out. Now, if you don't want all this extra stuff hanging off your computer and or your board, uh, we can also use the companion app. This is a mobile document camera and it has this feature called Throw on it. It's a paper airplane because you throw it. So if I go to Throw, it asks me to turn on my camera. If I turn on my camera, uh, I can take a picture of something. I'll just take a picture of the board here. Actually, you know what? Selfie time. Everyone says she's uh, there we go. Great looking group. Okay. Uh, check mark to accept my picture, paper airplane to throw it. Now it asks for something called the host name. This is the host name. So right now the board and the phone match. That's very important. So when I throw this, what's going to happen um, is it's going to tell me that it was successful. Uh, if my volumes turn up here, I might get a ding. Or I turn it off. Uh, do I want to open the picture? Yes. What that does is it just takes the picture from here, and now I can enlarge this, right, and then we can annotate over the top of it. So I don't need to use my document camera. I can actually run around um, and do this. Now, kids can do this too, right? So kids can interact with the board. So you're all going to be my students really quickly, and we're going to go to that portal. So www.ivboard.com slash sharp on your device and type in your name. You can scan the QR code too. And at the very bottom of this, after you type your name in, you're gonna see that paper airplane. Can everybody throw me a picture really quick? It can be anything. Just make sure it's appropriate. I'll test you. I will combine you. I'm not afraid to call your parents. Now, while you're all doing this, uh, you'll notice that none of you can just pop a picture up on my board, because that would be insane. Um, as the teacher, I have total control, and the way that I have control is through my uh, notification area, which is actually up here on the right. So it's a little bell right there. And when I click on that bell, I can see a preview, right, to make sure that all of your pictures are appropriate, right, that everything is uh, kind of following or lining up. Oh, this is a good one, Sarah. I gotta do this one. So when I go into here, uh, this opens up my magic box. Because remember, that's where the magic happens. And when I want to add these pictures, all I have to do is double tap them, and it's just going to download them and put them on the canvas. And I can do this over and over again as many times as I want to. Some of you have really big files. It might take a little longer because I'm on a hot spot. But um, the idea is that we can have kids Either one, take a screen capture of what they're working on. They're probably working on. Always got to pick the dogs and the babies. It looks like some skiing over here, too, which gets me excited. Um, so, this is a session where now all kids are participating from their device, but it goes up to the whiteboard and we kind of get a collage going. I use it for scavenger hunts. Find parallel lines and take a picture. Or take a screen capture of what you're doing on your Chromebook and send it up here. Um, what we're trying to do is move this away from something that just displays information, right? And allows kids to learn in a different way. Because uh, one of the most frustrating things is uh, send me, share the file with me so I can display it on my teacher computer. We well, don't need to do that anymore. They can just snap a picture of whatever's on their screen and send it up here really quickly. Uh, these also become part of what's called a throw session. So these all go to my Google Drive. So I can go access them later if I want to. <coughs> and then, of course, I can grab these like this. Oh, look at that picture, that's great. 
So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to do a pop quiz, and we're gonna do some math really quickly. So I told you I'm in math. So your pop quiz question today is, what is e fourths times six? So open the fireworks, they look like fireworks with A, B, C, D on it. And you're gonna get a little digital whiteboard that you can type with and or you can use your trackpad. Um, what I want you to do is write your answer and then throw it to me with the blue paper airplane. You'll see a blue paper airplane, you're gonna set it up here. Now, some of you are aggressive clickers. Just one click, please. It takes a second to send, okay? <laughs> Send a what? Oh, I knew it. There's always an aggressive clicker. What you don't know is I'm going to save this and grade it and post it on the Colorado Educator Facebook page. Hey, Dan, how do you erase if you're. <laughs> like if you're a student, there should be an eraser icon and or a trash can, I believe. How do you move your screen? Move on the, like, oh, yours, like that. So on the phone, on a phone, it's a little hard because it's so small. If you rotate it, it might move. Oh, did you mean? Uh, has anyone ever played Google Quick Draw? Yeah. It's a great game when you're by yourself and you're lonely and no one wants to play Pictionary with you. Um, so the, what you see at the top is actually Google Quick Draw. So it's trying to guess what you're drawing. So kids can like draw something, and if it's not perfect, they can click the image at the top. <coughs> So here's what pop quiz is. Has anyone ever seen a teacher have a whiteboard and all the kids have dry erase markers and they write their work and then they hold it up for the teacher? That's what pop quiz is. So I can say, well, Jocelyn was really fast, so I'm going to go and look at her answer. Now this is very small, um, so I can actually right click it and then what it's going to do is it's going to zoom in on theirs and then I can add my own kind of uh, teacher notes, right? Like I can say, can this be a mixed number? And then I can go back and move on to the next student. Now, uh, sometimes uh, there's a little bit of like a, oh, my name's on it, right? Well, part of that is just your classroom culture. But if it's a big <laughs> issue, just hit the A, right? And it reveals everybody's answers at once. So we can just scroll through it. Y'all actually did a good job. Most people just put hi or like hello or their name. There's actual solving going on. This is great. Um, so is it, it just takes from what you put send, it's not live, right? So if the kid keeps drawing and hits send again. It's just another response. So I could say, yeah, I could say, you know, now that we know uh, how to solve it as a mixed number, can everyone do it again? That's what I love about this, because it's like gaming, right? That's why games are so popular, because I can do it, fail, and try again immediately uh, to kind of perfect my craft. Uh, as the teacher, you can go back down here, uh, floppy disk, very modern. Uh, uh, and this allows me to save my results to drive, so if I really wanted to go back and look at student work, I could, and it has their names attached to it. Finally, it's the end of class, and your homework today is gonna be uh, pages six through nine, all the odd problems today. So I go down to the folder, this is my file management. So the floppy disks are to save the teacher copy, so I can actually make interactive lessons with cloning and money and all this kind of stuff, we're keeping it basic today. Uh, but if I wanna save this and share it with my team uh, and or access it next year, that's what the floppy disks are for. Again, I save it directly to Google Drive, but I love this one. This is called the QR share, so I hit this, it says, do you want to share your whiteboard? You say, yeah. What it does is it puts it in Google Drive, converts it to a PDF, uh, creates a share link, and then displays a QR code as well as a short link for the students. Um, so if you have older kids, they can scan the QR code, uh, take the notes with them, 
or if your kids can't have that kind of device, you can actually take the uh, short link that's generated and um, post it on Google Classroom. You can email it out, however you want to distribute it. We have a district that uses Canvas, so they take the link and then put it on Canvas and then the kids have notes of the presentation. This is taking a second because I apologize, I'm on my hotspot. So, ta -da. so if you want to scan that now, you can get the notes. Okay. They're gonna kill me because my time is going fast. What is uh, any questions about the whiteboard software? Again, I'm giving you the teacher lens. We'll get into some of the nerdy IT stuff in a second, but it's important to see how an interactive device is utilized in the classroom. Does the software come with it or is it subscription based on? So what we have at ViewSonic is what we have called entity users. So as a district, you would be identified as an entity, which means you can have as many as one. So there are licenses, but you have as many as one. Because what happens is we do what's called an entity user sync, where uh, we sync my view board, that's what we call my view board whiteboard, with teacher accounts, so the Google accounts. Because we don't use a different account to sign in the whiteboard, right? We use our Google account, so it's single sign-on. Um, and then you can download as many copies of the software as you want. And are you running this from um, software that you've installed on your device that you're projecting with, or is this native to the... This is all native to the board. Uh, now, as you'll see in a second, uh, again, I'm in charge of a lot of training. 90% uh, of the time, teachers plug in their device, because that's where all their stuff is, right? I showed you how to be able to get some of your stuff here, but most of the time we're plugging in our device. That's okay, we can still play with whiteboard on our computer. Right, if we want it to be in one place. But this is all standalone. And the cool thing about this uh, is again, these are on the wall, they're not going anywhere. So when I wanna sign out, I do this. I'm disconnected, it's like I was never here, right? And the next person can come up and sign in and boom, their drive connects. They can use it without signing in as well, right? That's a good question. Yes, you can. Uh, you can't do things like add YouTube videos or some of those kinds of things. Um, but yes, you can use it standalone. Like the software. Yeah, so that's a great point. So um, we actually have teachers who put their lesson plans on a flash drive, and then the USB ports in the front, they just plug it in and they can just open it right on the board. It's really easy. And then if like it doesn't lock, like if a teacher forgets to sign out and I'm in here next, I can sign them out. Yeah, and by default it's a 30 minute sign out, so it will just automatically, uh, you can increase or decrease that time. But it'll automatically sign them out? Yes. Okay. Yeah, after 30 minutes of inactivity, okay. that's just the default. You can set it to like five minutes up to eight hours if you want. If Wi-Fi is out, does the whiteboard still work? Yeah, it still works, we just can't sign into our drive, right? But the whiteboard will still work. Sure. Yeah, you can save it locally to this device, but I just can't mm -hmm. utilize anything mm -hmm. with Google. Okay. Because right, that's web based. So, oh. I'm sorry, if you talked about this already, you can connect wirelessly with devices? Yeah, so let's talk about that really quickly. Um, so, obviously, I can take my device and just plug it in. And that's, I would say, the best connection because wirelessly, as you kind of alluded to, there can be issues from time to time. Um, Plus you get full resolution and all those kinds of things. But if I want to switch, like, oh, I'm going to go do a small group in the back, but I still want my content in the front, I can cast. So what we use is a tool called VCast Receiver. Um, you'll see here that it displays a six-digit code for the teacher to type in. Uh, this is, by the way, strictly for teachers or district staff. This is not for students. Students actually cast a different way. Um, and so what I do here is I come in, uh, I open an app on my computer called Vcast Sender. So this just installs on my Mac or my PC or even my iPad. Uh, it asks for the six digit code, I type this in, A5G0JS, hit OK. Uh, there's a cast and receive option, by the way. Uh, the receive is mostly for IT because what you can do is if a teacher's having a problem with their board, and you don't want to go on site, you can tell them, open VCast and tell me the code. And then as IT, I can receive the screen and click through everything um, on my device. 
But as a teacher, I would click cast, and then you'll see here what it's going to do is it's going to start mirroring my device. And so now I can walk around and I can say, all right, I'm going to teach you about slope intercept today. And I can start typing this. Uh, the other cool thing, though, about casting is I actually get touchback. So even though I'm wireless, I can still interact with my board with touch. Now it's a little delayed, because what's happening is when I touch, it sends a signal back to my computer in there. So I don't think that's used as much. But in a pinch, if I needed to quickly touch the board, I can while casting. So again, this is called VCAST receiver. It's for teachers and or staff. Does it work with Chromebooks if the staff member is using Chromebooks? Yes. Uh, the only difference on a Chromebook is Chrome OS, because it's a lighter operating system, does not support touchback. But it will cast. Uh, same with an iPad. An iPad would mirror, but the iPad wouldn't support touchback. Uh, VCAST also allows for multiple devices, so you can have up to four screens. We also have another feature, so you can actually group VCAST together. So if this is another ViewSonic board, um, we could group them and then they would mirror, so it would be like broadcasting to all of them together. So that's for teachers. If you have guests who aren't on the district network, because that requires you to be on the same network as the board, uh, we have this tool called Display. This is web-based. So even though none of you are on my hotspot or know the password, if you go to myviewboard.com slash display, enter this display code, which is unique to the board, and then type in this passcode, your screen would start mirroring. Now it's projector only, I don't have touchback, but it's a really easy way if you have someone who's not on the network and you don't want to get them on the network for them to cast or display it to the board. So VCAST receiver is for um, teachers, this is for guests, and for students we actually use whiteboard. Um, you might have noticed on the uh, website I gave you there's a screen share option if you're on a Chromebook or a Mac or something like that. Uh, there's what's called the waiting room in Whiteboard, and the teacher can just click on kids and enable their screens um, up to six at once. The nice thing about that is kids don't need accounts, and they don't need apps installed on their devices. It's just a website, and the teacher controls it all. Is that wireless? Sorry. <laughs> is that wireless also sending the audio data and via the wireless both sides, whether it be cast or what you just showed there? Yes. How's the latency for like video playback is, is yeah. That, is that a no show sure. or is it? Sure. Uh, it's not my favorite. Yeah. Uh, just because uh, it is streaming, it's not playing natively. Right. Um, so anything native. So it, as a general rule, if you're going to play a video, try to plug in because it's just going to be a better um, experience. But let me. I'll just cast here so you can see and you can hear it too because these get nice and loud. Here we go, nice relaxing 4K <laughs> screensaver. Oh, no sound. <laughs> well, that was a bad one. <laughs> <laughs> I would show you my uh, whiteboard tools, but oh, there's, a, there's some dead mouse though. So when you cast, it's 1080p. Mm -hmm. If you hardwire, it's 4K. Yeah. Right, so it's just a lot higher resolution. Um, and this is obviously soft, but these get very loud for uh, classrooms. Is the wattage over those 20 watts? That's a good question, Max. What's the wattage on speakers? They're 12 or 15 watt speakers, but there's actually a 10 watt subwoofer. That's the difference for your wow. yeah. 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 yeah.
So I've only done four, but I think when I talked to Andy, it was six. Um, they also come with uh, um, the ability to daisy chain them. So you can do HDMI out, so you can just hardwire them together. Uh, but the easiest is casting, right? You just throw it up there. So then, um, one of the other things from the IT side, right, is the ability to manage uh, these devices. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, and then I'll let Max kind of jump in. But you'll see that there's this tool called Manager on here. This is part of our MyView Board suite. Essentially, you can enroll each of your boards uh, into um, a single console uh, for your district. Um, this one's already been enrolled to ours. This works for our interactive boards as well as uh, we make digital signage. So like if you just want a TV and stuff like that, uh, but we'll focus on this for now. So yep. uh, as an example, uh, something that Max can do uh, is he can send notifications uh, up to the board. So we'll have him send us a little message because I'm sure we all want our principal posting messages in the middle of class. Um, but, you know, there are some nice, useful things for that, so we'll have them do that here. And, and what I'll do is I'll actually jump on a whiteboard. I'll pretend like I'm teaching. Oh, so there's a little message there. It just pops up at the top. If I want to dismiss it, I just touch the X, and then it goes away. However, if you want to be annoying, you can do an urgent message. So he'll go ahead and send something here. You know, something that's really important. <laughs> uh, while he's doing that, I forgot that the whiteboard software has built it up. Oh, right when I show you. <laughs> so now I can't dismiss it, right, until he stops it. Okay. Um, really quickly, I forgot to tell you, um, our whiteboard software also comes with pre-built backgrounds. This is part of, like, being able to do quick adoption, because they don't really get into that. Um, the teachers love these because there's tons of different templates they can use um, without having to create it on their own. So we have like grids, quadrants, graph paper, line paper, tracing, all sorts of different things. Um, there's something that you want to play with. Can you create it on your own? Yeah, so it actually syncs with Google Drive. So if you have backgrounds in your drive, you can just open those as well. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, if you want to launch display, I'll go ahead and Oh, do you want to cast and show what you're doing? I share a little Can I interject bit? just for a yeah. second? Yeah. So we're coming up on a time where we were going to bring in a company that was also going to present a similar product called New Line. Well, my New Line rep got COVID a couple days ago. As a result, we don't have the panel and we don't have the New Line rep. And so I was going to cut this team short to bring in New Line. But I feel the energy and I feel that the resources they're sharing are really a benefit. So I just want to know, if we circled back on the new line, that panel's going to be here in a few days. If we passed on new line today, would that really bother anybody? No. no. If we continued on with ViewSonic, would that be a preference? That we're going to keep on and I want to leave you doing your thing on your natural timeline. Thanks. Um, and Jay, just so you know, we will have the panel here to view downstairs. The, the new line will be here. We just want to see it presented today so you can go view it at some point this week downstairs. And the, the new line rep is going to come back up. We just couldn't get it to click today, obviously. So just know that they're not out of the hunt, but I, I just appreciate it. And, you know, ViewSonic is really popular in this area. So these resources are the reason why. So I want you to get to see them all. So, sure. all right, thanks for your input. Carry on, man. Uh, it just stopped. Yeah. Sorry, I'll to get your password. The security. Do you just want to decast? Oh, you're not on my network. Oh, I think I am. Let me yeah, just decast. cast it. So for the IT folks that are in here and want to take a look at kind of this is what the management console looks like, but I know there are some administrators in here, and what's great about this is at the bottom, there is the ability to set permissions. And so you theoretically could get very granular and set up individual users within your organization, and you could assign them to just a certain group of devices. So if you just wanted per school or per location. Um, so to back it up a little bit, so it makes a little bit more sense, if I go back to this 
starting point. This is our entity, which is the fictitious school, and we have 157 devices enrolled. Um, if I click down on groups, I can see all the different groups that we have. And I've got Green Middle School, and I put your guys' panel in part of this group. So I could, I could theoretically select all of these devices and push out that faculty urgent alert, that fire drill, whatever it might be. <laughs> and so all the items that I have shown are completely included as well uh, as part of what Dan talked about, our view board entity program. There is a, a paid for advanced version, which actually turns this into like digital signage. So if you wanted to push out multimedia content like JPEGs or MP4, I know this has been requested a lot, and this was an implementation that Sonic took into consideration from principals and people who said, hey, I want to push morning messages or, or get your football ticket this weekend. And so what I can do is actually broadcast multimedia, and these devices are offline, so I will just select those, but I'm going to broadcast multimedia. And we have the ability here to choose, actually what I'm going to do is a playlist. So if you have this already built out, you could have somebody who's in marketing or admin create their own playlist of JPEGs and MP4 videos so they all fall in, in line. Um, so I've just put together four items here and they're just quick slides. And we'll do a continuous. If I wanted to, I could check this box like Dan mentioned and that would forbid them from actually ending the slideshow. But if I... Okay, so I put together this playlist, and it might just be like, hey, you know, remember daylight savings time is coming up, and then Women's Day on March 8th. You could have this all unique, I mean, and, and you could set the custom amount of time, so it could be seven seconds, 20 seconds, five minutes, you could have that static image up at the board, and then you could just have that looping continuous. There. Yeah, go ahead. Can it be like static images and videos interspersed? Yep, yep, absolutely. So that one I didn't do, I just did real quick. Um, but if I go down here to my actual media, this is like your media repository where you can upload all of your things. So like I've got a weather cancellation, um, our, our Pledge of Allegiance. Um, and if I go into my specific playlist as well, this is where I can customize, so I can move this down or up. Um, I can delete that, or I can lengthen the time if I wanted to. And all of this is really user-friendly. That's kind of the goal, is we've made it very affordable and very reasonable, but just with that user focus in mind, that this could be a teacher, even if you wanted to assign a student and offer this as like, some kind of a project for students to build some digital content, they could then push it to a select uh, number of boards, whichever ones are, are set up and enrolled. Otherwise, uh, what is also just completely included as not part of the advanced version is really this Im important statistics and data. And if I did have like a warranty issue, I can pull the serial number right here. So to Dan's point too, we have that ability to view the screen remotely. But from here, I could start that warranty ticket process by pulling the serial number. I don't have to get the teacher to go like behind the board and take a picture. Um, I can see the on time, I can see apps, and I can also schedule installs and firmware. So the view board operating system does have updates sporadically. So if you don't want those to interrupt class, you just turn off the auto updates and we schedule those to maybe happen on Fridays or something like that. We don't have a ton of firmware updates that go, but if there is a bug or something pops up, then we will release a new version. And to build on that a little bit, like if you already have TVs in your buildings, right, and you wanna be able to utilize this, we make something called a My Viewboard Box, and that can plug into any device, right, any display device, and then they all sync just like this. So even if you have an old interactive board, even though I know this is not old, I can make fun of Samsung because my buddy Randy works with them. So, um, <laughs> you can take that box, plug it into here, and it makes this board look exactly like this, or even a non-touch would then uh, have the ability to vcast and uh, display, display and all those kinds of things. 
So I know we're we're scheduled till 135. I do you want to save some time here for questions? I know you guys have been throwing them out throughout the presentation, which is great, but what other questions or maybe items that we missed or wish list items? Let's talk about the warranty and the support. Yeah, yep. Uh, to available white glove. Yep, absolutely. So um, we do come with a five-year on-site warranty, automatically included. So if there was ever a port that goes out or a line of pixels goes through the screen, we would deploy on-site service. If it's if it's deemed not fixable, we would just advance ship a replacement unit. So we ship that unit and then we take the old one away. Um, again, five years. These are rated for fifty thousand hours on the backlight light. So. Uh, you can tell too that the commercial brightness, it's a higher nit brightness than just your standard consumer TV. And Dan was up there touching it. It's extremely rugged. It's got uh, seven inch glass. I had a, I had a tech director throw a chair at it in okay. Wisconsin to show his fed teachers that it would be fine. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would never do that, but I, he felt comfortable doing that. So. Uh, We've talked a, quite a bit today about like my view board and what that software is. But just know from an ongoing support standpoint too, we've got a really nice knowledge base that's already built out. Do you guys have an instructional ed tech team? Nice. So that is really like where Dan helps implement a customized type of rollout for you. So it's like, hey, we're you know we want to do the casting or we want to use Google Apps in this certain environment, and he helps kind of strategize those best workflows. Um, but if we are talking about like whiteboard, and I know Dan spent a lot of time on the embedded version here, so if I click on whiteboard for Android, I can go through and I've got embedded videos, but then there's also these guides that say like, oh, this is where he signed in, and oh yeah, this is where he had a session ID, and the floating toolbar, the main toolbar, even the magic box, right? So I can click and drill into the magic box and I find out these were all the things that you guys did before, throw, um, pop quiz. So just know that those resources are, are really built out and we've got an extensive resource uh, library. Yeah, we, um, part of the thing that we work out is on-site PE, right? Training, because that's really important. Uh, especially some of the local, right? There's no reason not to have me out. Uh, but we also have uh, our online certification program. Uh, so that's something that teachers can go to self-paced. We have three levels, graduates the lowest, right? It just teaches you the basics. Then we have educator, uh, which goes a little more in depth into creating interactive lessons. And then if you are really passionate and you wanna be a trainer, uh, there's a trainer level here where we share all of our insider secrets about like how to make this effective. Um, and so that's totally complimentary. Uh, I cost, the PE team costs money, but we'll figure that out. Um, but we try to make it as easy as possible because we know that this is not, um, again, as I said earlier, this will get used as a projector and or a chalkboard. And our goal is to make it more than that, right? Move up that SAMR model uh, away from substitute. So, well, there it is. Yeah. You get you get badges and certificates and stuff, right? I'm I'm obsessed. I have all my badges on me. <laughs> and some of you are. I can tell you get your stickers on your lap. <laughs> That's what I'm working on next is getting stickers. So when you pass me the sticker, and I know you know different different districts in the area too. We can we're happy to share any kind of references or testimonials. Well, six. Um, nearby has implemented all of USonic. You know, they have different ecosystem. They uh, historically use Promethean and flip charts are very important to them. And they are mostly Windows based. So, you know, just different conversation, but you can kind of see the appeal with USonic. Ultimately to kind of wrap this all back up how I started, we're a panel company. So we have really reliable uh, hardware and it is agnostic, so you have all those ports on the side, you have the casting ability from a Windows, a Mac, a Chrome device. So that's more of the, the thought process is creating an open platform. Um, beautiful, beautiful big display. Do displays come in different sizes based on yes. the availability? So what are some other sizes that we could 
Yep. As well. Yep. So actually, we just recently launched a 43 inch, which is our smallest. So that would be more for like uh, front facing teacher podium style or maybe like a huddle space or a conference room. 55 inch is also dedicated more for like a conference room. 65 inch for small classrooms, 75 inch. This is an 86, and then we also have a 98 inch for like media centers or really big areas. But you have to be cognizant about where you install that because it's heavy through the door. And then also the ability to touch the top of the board too is, is important because it's, it's big. We did our train when we when I first started doing training videos. We did it on a 98 inch, and you can't tell, but I'm on a stool the whole time. Because <laughs> I would say 75 inch and 86 inch in the classroom have become the most popular sizes, but lots of flexibility. And then, as Dan mentioned too, we do have those non-interactive commercial displays, which have the same management and the same casting software. So if you are working with the instructional team and wanting that. Uh, you know, the, the similar flow, you can use those same apps. It's just going to be a non touch TV versus the interactive. But. How heavy is it compared to a, a, a typical flat screen TV? If we did one on it? It's heavy. Yeah, I mean, they're heavy. They're heavy. But, and I can give you all the weights and specs. Compared to some of our competition, I know we've been able to shave it down a little bit. And that's actually been pretty important to some customers. So, you know, I think. There's uh, some of the other panel companies will work <coughs> five pounds lighter, but I can get you all the, the details on the exact specs. But part of that is they're meant to be durable. Like, uh, I think Jim, he's in Chicago, he hauls his around in his van, and he's got like chunks like out of the corner from dropping it on concrete and stuff. And it's still wash, so. <laughs> Don't recommend that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again yeah, so really much. And it. I left my card. We can share Dan's contact info too. Oh, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Dan gets blown up all the time. So, yeah. But let us know. We're we're here to help. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.